Hi, I'm Dave, owner of Future Pass Vintage Collectibles with my daughter Rachel, Hello. as we are every week. Yes. And I want to go right into something. We had shown this book. It's uh, Lost in Space, uh, Swiss Family Robinson number 20. And uh, can you show the video real quick? I just want to recap like what I was saying about this book. Here it is. I feel really good in hand, right? Yeah. I mean, it's got... It's got super a, glossy. It's really glossy. It's very tight. It's a little bit bigger than, than normal comic books. So it's got bone white pages. Just it, it's a it's a very nice copy. Well, it has saying? grease pen on it too, which we didn't mention. Yeah. Well, the grease pencil doesn't bother me, and I don't think it drops it under um, very fine plus. Just something to mention because I know someone will say something about it. <laughs> no, I'm glad you did. I, uh, one thing about this grease pencil is I can get it off. So if I chose to, I can get it off. I personally like it, um, and I actually like this book. So these are really hard to find and great. So. One of our viewers uh, is a CGC board member. His name is Nerve. He had messaged me, and then I bumped into him in San Diego, and he had asked me if I'd gotten the message yet. He had just pointed out that this eight signifies the circle eight pedigree. And, and that's why I wanted to show that video. I, I knew as I was holding this book, and it's a good point to make, that pedigree books often do have qualities that make them stand out. And, and being, uh, you know, original owner collections that weren't bought and sold, they didn't get as much wear, typically. Sometimes the page quality, like the page quality here is really white. There's no doubt, and, and we'll show the, the pictures that this is a circle eight. So that's, yeah. that's Can I read cool. some of what it says? Please, Okay, yeah. it says, uh, in 1992, a massive collection of 100,000 comics were discovered in a barn in Tucson, Arizona, uh, by Greg Bowles and Howard Harris. It was assembled through a used bookstore between 1955 and 1972, who discounted unsold comic books by writing a grease pencil eight inside a circle, indicating a discount of two cents off of the original 10 cent cover price. Oh, that's why I say. <laughs> yeah, which is really cool. And I mean, then it yeah. says, uh, this practice continued as cover prices increased to 12 cents and then 15 cents and 20 cents. So this was one of the original um, with an estimated 50% off, 50% of the collection exhibiting the written discount. Uh, many of the highest graded horror and science fiction Atlas comics from the 50s hail from this pedigree. Yeah, I had spoken with some people and they had told me that this is much more known for older books. But anyway. that's, you know, I love comic, I love our comic community and, and uh, that was awesome that he was able to point that out and I 100% agree. And it may, it's funny because I really should start paying more attention. I know about pedigrees, but I'm certainly not an expert in them. We get um, a lot of books that have stamps and stuff like that, so we just need to kind of... It always makes me perk up when I see something <laughs> written on a book that's old, much older that uh, I wonder if I should match this to a pedigree mark. And if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, most pedigrees have a mark. Um, a tell. And, and Rachel will show a few right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Iwo Jima is a very sought-after pedigree, uh, and, and they're marked... Um, you want to name a couple? I mean, just like the big ones are Gaines File Copies, Your church. Edgar Church, yeah. Mile um, High. The Mile High. Yeah. Um, those are like the two biggest ones that I think of when I think of pedigrees. The Larson Pedigree has mm -hmm. marks. We just showed Winnipeg Pedigree in our last video. There's a lot of them. Promise Collection was like the la the latest pedigree. That Pen came Pennsylvania out. had the P. Um, anyway, cool stuff. Uh, a little bit about pedigrees, and now we're going to move on with some books we're going to show. Before we do that, though, we're going to talk a little bit about what we do. If you're new, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe because we always post videos every week. Uh, and we are comic dealers. Yep. Um, we specialize in Bronze and Copper Age comics, high grade specifically, but we have right. tons of different stuff. We really like to feature a lot of like the weird stuff here on our channel. Most people don't specialize in bronze, but that's my bag. That's so, our bread and butter. I, I love bronze. I'm always <laughs> looking for particular things in bronze. I'm continuing to learn as much as I can about things I don't know enough about in my own opinion. And bronze is our, is our wheelhouse, but we definitely get silver age all the way up to modern. Yep. So we buy collections. If you're considering selling books, Reach out to us if you, can see, if you want to do a trade or you see something that you like. Feel free to reach out to us through our website, which is in the description. But uh, we are actively buying at all times. So if you have books to sell, consider us. Yeah. I have something cool to show today. I have something cool to show today. Rachel has some books to show. I, <laughs> I had this moment the other day where I just wanted to open something that I really wasn't supposed to open. Um, and I say that because I was gifted this as a child by my dad. <laughs> I don't even child. know. Did you buy it in 1990? Yes, I did. Okay, so it was before I was even born that you bought it then. Yes. That's wild. Well, I knew your mom was pregnant. You, you knew I was coming. Yeah. <laughs> so 
it was like a preemptive, a yeah. baby present. Baby Somehow out. I've kept it for 30, almost 32 because, years. Because comics are important. And it was sealed. And it looked like this. It is the Disney Comics number one collection from June 1990. Um, it had been sealed, but it got damaged a little bit in the many years that I've been alive. Schlepping it around the world. <laughs> and I just, I had to open it. So I opened it the other day and I'm going to show you what is in there. Um, there is a certificate that says that these, if this is a special it's edition real. collection. It's special. the same issues that were printed normally, but these are all the number ones. Yeah, it's a collective. Do you have anything else to say about it before I show them? No, this? show them. They're cool. I, I, They're really cool. I, I, I look through this um, and they are so fresh. These are really nice books and Golly, that is a long time ago. I know, I held on to them for a long time. <laughs> um, so first, I have Goofy Adventures number one. I'll have a scan up on the screen. This is one of my favorites out of all of them. It's I, great. I love Goofy. Yeah, I love it. Um, and then I have Roger Rabbit number one, which I looked through this one and it's just the movie. It's yep. the story of the movie, which is one of my favorite movies as a kid. Um, and then there's Donald Duck Adventures number one. All of these are, like, so shiny. Yeah, the gloss on these and, and the whiteness of them is impressive. They have not been touched for, I, I love you know, uncirculated books of any kind. I love them. <laughs> Mickey Mouse Adventures, number one. It's got a little horror action going on. Uh, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, number one. Oh, yeah. Did you see the movie on Netflix? Because it's really funny. No. It's great. Uh, and then DuckTales, number one. Yeah. 1990 Gold. So you felt you felt like you shouldn't be opening that. I I remember when I was younger, you were like, "Do not open these." That was that's really interesting. You bring that up. That was the aesthetic then. Don't open anything that was sealed in a bag. Now it's like if you have something sealed in a bag, get it out of the bag. Well, I'm it, glad I yeah. did because they were getting damaged in there. Like there were some creases. Um, I think everything here is a nine eight candidate. It, it, nothing's. Uh, well, there's one that has like a messed up corner, but it was like they were saran wrapped yeah, in this, right. like inside of this, which is why they got damaged and because it's been moved around a lot, but right. they're really nice and I'm happy to have them. So we, we do live sales every Monday over on Instagram and we're doing another one over uh, on Instagram on Friday. What kind of books are we going to be featuring? Oh, I don't know yet. I'm going to figure that out. <laughs> I did start pulling hey. some, <laughs> uh, but if you're not following us on Instagram, make sure you do that. Uh, because we go live over there every Monday, like I said, and then we do like pop up sales on there too, just like we do over here on YouTube. Yeah. Um, link down below. Give us a follow. Um, but we're gonna go live this Friday, and then right. every single Monday from five to seven p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we are live over there selling books. We have a lot of fun. Great community there too, and uh, we sell everything. We so. do. So we're doing something right. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so uh, I just got back from San Diego Comic Con, and typically when I go to something like that, I. I'm always open to buying books. I'm never not there to buy anything. But if I didn't buy a single thing, I'm fine. So as as I'm looking at books, I definitely picked up some books. And uh, <laughs> Big surprise. <laughs> well, know, first, did you like it? Did you have a good time? It's been 20 it was, years since you've been. It's great. It was fantastic. I mean, I loved everything about it. I, I got stuck at the Lego uh, um, <laughs> display. Uh, definitely wanted to buy some. Everything that I wanted was sold out immediately. So oh, yeah, I, Lego. You know, I learned a couple lessons about having to get there early. They were only open like three hours a day. Um, but yeah, there was a bunch of other things outside of comic books I really dug. But I only bought comic books and books for my grandson. Okay. Oh, I did and, bring and my, books I for you. I left my books yeah. at home. Yeah, the ones you got me. I'll mention them. Um, I'm going to show some of the things I picked up. And as a comic dealer, um, there's two ways that I focus on things at conventions typically. Uh, one is if can, I can get a good deal. So if I'm looking through something and I feel... I can either improve the book or the book is priced at something that's worth me investing in, I'll buy it. And the other is I know the rarity or scarcity of a book and I will pay what you're supposed to pay. I, mean, I, I didn't ask anyone for a discount, but everyone gave me one. I did ask one person, I think. Oh. <laughs> Don't lie. <laughs> Well, it was overpriced. And, 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 and you know what, how conventions are. We've talked about it. Yeah, before. you know, here's what I believe. I, I believe everyone's, you know, out there to make a living, and they, they have a lot of overhead. But I also believe that overpaying is just not a good idea. So if you have your finger on the pulse of what something should cost right now, typically, dealers will do that. I think if you're 30 40 50% off the ask, 
uh, the chance is low that they would want to just cut something in half. Mm. Some people might want to run that game and overprice something uh, and then make you feel like you're getting a good deal and you're still overpaying. Uh, don't play that game <laughs> as a buyer. But but anyway, I was able to really get some nice stuff. I'm just going to show these in, in a strange order. Here's a book I like. Yeah, and we'll have scans up of these, but yep. I'll also show them right here. This is Vigilante number one. I love this book, and, and, and I want it in 9.8. Um, and the last copy I had had some issues around the staples, and this one's much nicer. Um, I would I, I would have a hundred of these because I love what DC's doing with this character right now. He's and this one of, cover is so cool. You dig that cover? Yeah, huh? it's great. It it's it's well done. It's a well done cover. Um, the whole series actually, I have the rest of the series is great. Um, but anyway, I picked things like that up. I was going to get a number one. I thought it was a little overpriced from what I wanted to spend, and I've had Voltrons before, but we're going to show scans of, of Voltron 2 and 3 real quick. Um, love this series in Near Mint Mint. Um, and that, these are nice. Those are just pristine. By the way, these came from a collection someone had just bought a week before um, the convention and really just kind of graded everything at 9.2. I didn't tell you this yet. Mm -mm. Graded everything at 9.2 because it was like unread, uncirculated comics. And Which are your bread and butter. You thousands of them. Yeah. So some were a little overpriced, uh, and I was able to uh, work a deal on some. And the guy gave me a decent dis discount because I bought a lot. Yeah. But he had, I don't know how many of these. This is everyone's favorite Fantastic Four cover. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone you, loves this cover. If you like Galactus <laughs> and, and you like John Byrne, this is a must own. And, and I love I love this book. Any, and, any Galactus cover is the one. And this sells every time we put it up for yeah. sale. People people like this book. People when want it's this. priced right. Right. I this found, is a nice one. Yeah, I, found, I, I happened to run into a dealer that had thousands and thousands of books. And I found one book I wanted. And it was this. This is Phantom Stranger number 30? Yeah. Because of the grade. Is this a PC book? Um, I haven't inspected it yet. If it's a 9.6 or 9.8, um, a 9.8 would be 100% yes. It looks like it could be. It's yeah, I'm going to look. look back, I, but. It looks good, but 9.8 is almost an impossible grade to get for 20 centers, just so you guys know. What's going on with this hairy guy? Well, you know, <laughs> Elwood asked me if that was an ogre under the bridge, and I'm like, it is. <laughs> this is my five-year-old grandson. And then he goes, but he's blowing fire, Papa. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, he is. <laughs> All right, here is Brave and the Bold, uh, number 75, Spectre and Batman. This is just sitting there, waiting to come home with me. <laughs> I know, we love Spectre. I showed my brother this, and he's like, where did you get that? Because it's really high grade, and it was not expensive at all. So, um, this is a Neil Adams cover that another one, my grandson, just got fascinated with this cover. He's like, his hand is so big. He he's such bad a guys. bad guy. Yeah. I love this book, um, and this is an era that I really appreciate, um, and this is right in the Bronze Age as it started. There was a small period of time, I think this book came out in 68, but like I said, it's in the very beginning of like what we consider the Bronze Age. Um, I And this is, uh, it's kind of a nothing burger. <laughs> but, but if not you to know me. my dad, he loves well, Planet of the Apes. I love high grade. So it's like, there's this cross section of like, would I pick up anything in high grade? Just about. If the price is right and the grade is there, uh, books from the 70s, 60s that are this high grade, because this is unread, it's just a beautiful, perfect copy, and that's kind of, that's PC, by the way. Yeah. yeah, I mean, again, it's also Planet of the Apes, which is your fave. Um, I, I like this Todd McFarlane cover. Uh, Rachel prefers the next one where he has a cigarette in his mouth. It's and I, the better cover. I, I kind of, <laughs> yeah, can you show that cover? Yeah, I'll pop that up I, I, I kind of agree with her to some degree, but it's still early Todd McFarlane. And as you can tell by this cape, this is Spawn's cape. It will be Spawn. Yeah, that, he, Spawn's going to borrow that cape. <laughs> He's going to just borrow it from Mr. Bones. Now, I know you're jealous. <laughs> Fem Force. <laughs> you, you guys, I love this cover. Uh, scantily clad women and a dinosaur, uh, right in the heart of the 80s, I'll take one. I'll t and you did. Yep. And, and I got more than one of these because they're uncirculated. Um, and whenever whenever I get books like this, these are the books that I want to feature and sell and stuff. So I always pick up as many as I can. Um, I found this, and, and this didn't cost much, or it's not like a major key or anything. I like it. Um I like anything from this era from these obscure publishers. 
So I pick up stuff, you know, I'm not a Marvel DC guy, I'm a comic book guy. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And and I got some copies, I have more than one copy of this. Blue Beetle. Because they're uncirculated and they're just really nice and the, the price was right. Yeah. So I, I did get some more of these. Um, this is an important book to me. First of all, it came out on the 50th anniversary of Action Number 1, which was 1983, if I remember correctly. This is only that story, because there's... Originally, I think this had 64 pages. Yeah, it definitely was thicker than that. So it's just the Superman story, which is dope. I mean, it's a great story if you've never read it. Um, I'm going to open it and show the little baby picture. Because I think that's what you were talking about. Yeah, show them the back cover. Okay, here's the back cover. <laughs> which is cool. If you've never read Action One, the actual story, it's worth a read. A lot of people uh, in nine eight these go for maybe a buck fifty, hundred and fifty dollars. But um, the best way to have this book is raw. I, if you ever want to look at it, I, anyway. So uh, I've been looking for a copy of this, and I found my copy. Um, super nice. I think it's probably in your mint. Um, and I'll sell this in the future, but I'm going to hold on to it for a while because I, 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 I would have 10 of these if I yeah. could. They're just, they're always expensive. And once you start getting into high grade, Joe. yeah, well, this is the, this is the issue. Sometimes I think this issue is worth more than the number one. Mm. It's, it's just different. It even says it on the cover. It says it. The most unusual GI Joe comic. Um, or story. Some usual suspects coming. Wolverine eight, Everyone um, Joe fix it. Yes. Give it to me. Yeah. Uh, I feel like this is another one that like everyone should have in their collection. If you like Wolverine and Hulk, this is this is about as good as it gets. Pick this little thing up. Uncanny 266. Super nice copy of this as well. Um, and the first appearance of Gambit. I don't know if I've ever owned this. I oh, may really? have. I may have owned it. Doesn't but look I haven't had a lot of them yet. Uh, and yeah, I'm super happy to get that. We've had a lot of Uncanny X-Men. Maybe not that one. Everyone needs a little Scooby Doo in their Scooby-Doo life. Scooby Doo number five. I just I know I'm going to show a scan of it, but that witch. Yeah, it's a once again. This is a like a near mint mint candidate. Um, cool. You got a few of these. And it's so funny. You show this book, and in the scan, if you can show the bottom right corner, this book is notorious. I have had ten copies of this, and every one of them has had a corner crease. Weird. Every one of them. It, it, it's just there's something about the paper, the color. Um, this is a great cover. That's Galactus's hand. Um, it's the iconic cover. Yeah, the, and this book's hot. I mean, it, it, it's definitely a sought-after book. So I'm, I'm glad to get a copy, but it's probably a 9-0. With that corner. And I'd really like a 9-8 of this. So I'm going to keep looking until I get one. I'm sure that there's a couple of you that feel the same way about that particular uh, John Byrne cover. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here's some horror, weird mystery tales, number six. You can't go to a convention without getting at least one horror book. I feel like that's the rule. So this could be the bell of the ball for this group. <laughs> um, that's so cool. Yeah, so we'll, we'll look at this cover together. You got the kids, check, right? You got the scary <laughs> background house, check. You got the dog, check. <laughs> And then you got this creepy figure that doesn't see the kids, but they see him. This is a Gray Morrow cover. I love Gray Morrow. Um, some of the people I, I was with, they saw this. One of them asked me, like, well, sell me that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here's what's interesting. I, 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 was, I had some people around me, and I'm looking at this book, and everyone I showed this book to wanted it. It's like once, It's so funny because Weird Mystery Tales is not necessarily a well-sought-after publication but the fact is is that as uh bronze age horror becomes more and more popular these are sleeper covers out there that when someone sees them like that's insanely good i mean this is just so, as good as a house of mystery cover it is like it, if this said house of mystery at the top you know it would work it would work it would work <laughs> uh gray morrow is a great artist so then i picked up some uh, more ditko ghostly haunts ghostly haunts these are really cool a friend of mine had pointed these out as we were looking. Uh, well, actually, when I was looking at him, he asked me if I was going to buy him. <laughs> and then you're like, yes. <laughs> uh, I am now. <laughs> I, I feel like Charlton also is kind of a sleeper with the horror books. They're really cool. This one reminds me of that Mickey Mouse one. Yeah, this is uh, The Blot. Yeah, The Blot. The Blot, yeah. yeah. that's what it reminds me of. It's Blot-esque. Blot-esque. What's his name? <laughs> that's what it says on the cover. 
Hey, what's, Is it the block? what's my name? Here's a Captain America annual number eight. Dad's Day. Behold, Mike Zek goodness. <laughs> Talked about Mike Zek last time. This is kind of the Mike Zek grail. Wolverine, come on. The, this particular annual is very expensive. and, and uh, I see why. It's sick. It's a few hundred dollars in, in 9.8. And it's just a fantastic action cover. And Mike, and Mike Zek really brings out this, I don't know, this almost 3D effect of, of just explosion, you know. So uh, this one I'll probably keep for a while, eventually sell, but I do plan on getting more copies anyway. This is the first cameo of Killer Croc. I was able to pick a copy of this up. We've had a few of these. Yeah. Very um, yellow cover. <laughs> so yellow. Uh, it, I, and they're not necessarily hot. They still sell. I mean, and they're still valuable, but I'm just going to keep buying them. I have a nine, at least one 9.8 of this that's slabbed. Mm -hmm. um, we, I think we have two slabs. Yeah, I, they might both be 9.8s. I don't remember, yeah. Um, this is a nice one. All right, House of Mystery 211. Yep, and that is Bernie Wrightson cover uh, with a Dracula dude resurrecting some guy out of a grave. And my grandson also had a lot to say about this cover. Oh yeah, he loves he loves bad guys. That is so cool. Is this PC? Uh, it depends. I, I really haven't gone through it yet. Um, if that's a 9.4 or a 9.6 it is. Do you remember what the page quality is? No. Cool. Don't even know if I took it out of the bag. I might have... You got me curious now. We gotta see. You wanna grade it together? Sure. Okay, we'll do a little grading exercise. So we'll look at the front cover first. The lighting in here is not great. Okay, what you got? I mean, the only thing that's going on is this. It's a binary tear, though. That's the only thing. I think it's a near mint. Near mint. You call it an I-4? Yeah. Near mint. I agree. Um, I think it has the possibility of being a 9-6. So this will benefit from a press. It might be a near minus. Um, this also needs to be cleaned. Um, but it has a lot of gloss. The gloss kind of pops out on it. It's got paper quality. Off white white. Yeah, that's a bummer. <laughs> so now, well, that's okay though. It, it, for this series, it's really difficult to get white pages as yeah. you get higher in grade. Um, yeah. Mint though on that. That's too shallow. If it's if, if I if I think I can get a nine six out of this, I'll keep it. We're both calling this a near mint. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it's right on the edge of being a uh, near mint minus. There's a little crease that goes all along the front cover. I don't know if that'll pop up on the scan, but I'll try. Yeah, so. if you can get an angle on it, it might. But but uh, this is completely removable uh, based on my experience. Yeah, no crazy color breaks, just that bindery tear. It's got eight, good, it's got eight sharp corners. Um, there are no color breaking spine ticks that are more than 1 32nd of an inch. There's like, like that, one. The granular one right there might. Like there's this one that's like a little longer. Well, it doesn't. But it doesn't, it doesn't break color. It doesn't break the black border. One of the things I'd like to point out when grading these books, they were supposed to line up perfectly the spine to this black line. So this is not uh, aligned perfectly. It, it does the cover fades to the right. But what I like about the black line is if you do have a color break, it shows up and it will crack the color in the black. Not every time, but most of the time. Just a I don't know grading hack. <laughs> It's a good way to know if there's color breaks. It's just one of the things in this era on the books that they had lined up like that. My friend Ken, we were both at Richard Evans' booth from Bedrock Comics, and I've been fortunate enough to interview him a few times. We're going to be doing more of that in the future. He had put this aside and said, hey, I think you'd like this. It's Our Army at War 221. And he was right. Yeah, I bought it. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it's right here. Look, I mean, you're going to see the scan. Yeah, I, I think I've seen it before, um, but I've never really focused on it. This is a very nice copy, and I really do like the whole thing going on here. you got a guy fighting the, in the foreground, fighting viciously, hoping that his partner helps him. But his partner is being haunted by demons, and he just looks... Beside himself. The so art this, style is so cool. This is really one. cool, and I, I really do enjoy the way... Um, the red and white, almost like are they a figment of his imagination or are they actually there? So this is a great cover and I dig it and it falls into my horror theme that I like so much. Detective 575. 
Yeah, I got a couple of these actually, and uh, because of the condition, I just think they're great. And this is right after the McFarlane run, if I'm uh, if I remember that correctly. It's not McFarlane, but I love that cover, and it's a great Batman cover. Wild. Um, we'll go backwards here. So let's start with this one. Okay. Weird War Tales number four. I love that theme. We've talked about this book before. I have other copies of this. Father Time emptying out his life right in front of him as he turns into an old man. This is why I like this genre. Sick. Great orange background. Anyway, this is a really nice copy. It looks like somebody dropped and it has some issues in the corner here on both sides. And I think I can actually correct those because they don't break color. And if they do, it's really small. So this is probably at least a near mint. Um which is high grade for this book. And Joe Cooper. But as, as we go up on these books, like this one. This is Weird War Tales number three. Yeah. This this is one of my favorite covers. It's and really for cool. a couple of reasons. Number one, that black. Raw in hand, this book just looks fantastic. And this is probably a 9 It has a couple of color breaks that aren't bad. I mean, they're very thin and uh, you, you can barely see them. And that's great. It's, it could be a 9-2. I'd have to uh, really kind of look at it to know. But it's not a very fine plus, so it's not an 8-5. It, it, it's up in the 9-0, 9-2. It's high grade. And that, for me, is like, yes, I would grab every copy that that was within, you know, a reasonable price. And here's but this the is, bell of the ball. This is her. <laughs> yeah. I said that the other book was actually, boom. Weird War Tales number one. Well, and there's... This isn't a rare book or a scarce book. As you get into grade, it is. Now, as you start to go into this, is probably this could be a nine four. It's really really high grade. Um, I am not selling this because this will just go into the other seventies um, horror stuff that I have because it's so hard to find. Um, yeah, so I did pick up a lot of books. I was kind of surprised I picked up so many books. <laughs> I think that's, it's an easy stack. thing to do at a comic convention, especially San yeah. Diego Comic Con. <laughs> you know, they always say if you uh, if you don't want a haircut, don't go to a barber shop. <laughs> all, right. all right, that's all we have. I have more coming. We have more stuff we're going to show later. We sure do. In another episode. Yes. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell so you get notified when we post new videos or when yeah. we go live because we do go live over here and follow us over on Instagram. Do that. We do claim sales all the time over there. We sell comics. We do. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.